Hey everyone, welcome back once again to my YouTube class. I'm Manjit Rawat, your online instructor. This is another video of VMware Virtualization. And in this video, I'm going to define how we can install vCenter Server 7 on your ESXi. I'm talking about the VMware vCenter appliance. So let's uh, get it started. And first of all, we need to know about the concept or um, prerequisite related to the vCenter servers. If you want to establish a new vCenter server in our environment, so you should know about the prerequisites. So before that, I just wanted to uh, describe about the setup that I established. So in my case, uh, what I did, I installed one ESXi host with the configuration of uh, uh, this is the CPU means 4.9 gigahertz of CPU of my ESXi, 13 gig of RAM that I used and up to 200 gig space which is help us to install vCenter server. So this is my ESXi and we will use the same ESXi to install our vCenter server appliance. Second important service related to domain controller. For domain, we have already discussed about how we can convert our uh, ESXi to the part of domain controller. So we have already made it. We have already converted our ESXi from, uh, uh, we already added our ESXi to domain controller. Let me show you. If you want to verify your ESXi is a part of domain or not, so you just need to click on manage. And in part of security and user, we are able to find one option related to authentication. And in the authentication, we added our ESXi with vm.local, right? So this is the prerequisite we have already discussed. We have already uh, understand about the procedure to join our ESXi to domain controller, right? And uh, this is our domain controller that we installed on server 2016 with name of vm.local. And everything is okay. Everything is available means uh, about the prerequisite. Just let uh, you know about the all prerequisite in notepad and meanwhile i'm just going to connect my external hard drive that uh, contain the iso image of uh, vcenter server 7.0 right so very basic uh, information related to prerequisite what you need to do if you want to establish if you want to configure esxi host if you want to configure vcenter over esxi so what you need to do first and important part you must need to establish at least one esxi with good configuration. So this is our ESXi 7.0 and about the RAM I used 13 gig, is, uh, th 13 gig RAM for ESXi and if we talk about CPU contain two core of CPU about HDD so minimum hard disk you must need to configure at least 200 gig uh, to store the vCenter servers activity. Second important second uh, uh, system you can say that I established a domain controller on server 2016 So our domain is running properly over our server 2016 The domain name is vm.local. Okay, this is another prerequisite third step what you need to do download ISO of vCenter server. So I have already created a video regarding how to download vCenter server from VMware site, right? So these all are the prerequisites. Let's talk about how we can establish your environment, how you can install the vCenter server in our ESXi with the help of our plans. So uh, what you need to do before you start the installation, you need to make few settings related to the vCenter server. Yes, I'm talking about the setting related to the vCenter with domain controller. So in case of our domain, what you need to do, you need to configure one DNS record. I hope you are aware from the record. We need to configure a record for the domain uh, for vCenter server. And we need to use same record with our forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone both. So I'm planning to install our vCenter server with uh, uh, the IP address. You must need to decide IP address for vCenter server before installation of our vCenter. So I'm just going to create a vCenter and provide, uh, we will provide IP address 192.168.1.235, right? This is the IP address uh, that we will use for our vCenter server, fine? So what I'm going to do, our ESXi is already a part of domain controller. So second step, we need to create a one record for vCenter. Open, click on tools, go to the DNS. And under the DNS part, you need to open for a look of John, vm.local, means you need to open the domain controller name that you used. And uh, right click, click on new host and 
for new host i'm just going to create a record for vcsa uh, but before that just need to remove the entire record which is uh, already available in my dns so just right click and click a record i want to put the name for vc vcenter server vcsa uh, and uh, ip address should be uh, i want to use 1.225 right and you must need to check mark it means uh, create associated point record in our reverse lookup zone so this setting can help you to uh, resolve the name of your uh, vcenter server that we are planning to install right so this is another important setting we already created we our uh, uh, vcsa record are automatically reflect in the re reverse lookup zone it, it means that you are able to convert name to ip and ip to name this is the first prerequisite second important part need to check the uh, configuration of your esxi so this is our esxi where we plan to install our vcenter server ram should be a minimum 12 gig and about hard drive you must need to connect a local storage with 200 gig space and cpu must contain at least two core of cpu right these all are the prerequisites that you need to uh, manage before installation of our vcenter server second important part and uh, just need to open our system and uh, find the iso image of uh, vcenter server so i have already connected my external storage external hard drive you can see that that contain the iso image of uh, vcenter server so let me connect it again because i am unable to find the vcenter server in uh, my computer i can right Fine, so we successfully connected our external storage, external hard drive and uh, ISO image which is available I think, let me check, I actually I forgot it, so in AWS, yeah this one is the VCSA ISO image, the capacity of VCSA is 9 point something GB. Uh, what you need to do, you just need to right click and mount it, the ISO image and uh, open VCSA UI installation, installer means we are planning to establish, we are planning to install our ESXi with the help of GUI panel and we have a Linux, Mac and Win32, it means that Windows operating system just need to open it and you will find a one option related to the setup of vCenter server. So this is the installer, you just need to double click here and it will be redirect you on page of installation guys this is the first page you can say that this is the procedure that you can use to install vcenter server install upgrade migrate and restore so Definitely we are trying to install our first vCenter server in our environment so that's why we need to proceed with the installation because we don't have uh, any existing server that you need to proceed with the upgrade or migrate or restore right. So just need to click here install it give us option we need to follow two different stages to install vCenter server one is stage one and second one is stage two we have already decided the IP address for vCenter server 192.168.1.225 1.225 which is already configured in our DNS record right so just need to click next accept the term and license next provide the IP address detail means IP address of your ESXi host so our ESXi IP address is 192.168.12 and make sure your ESXi should be a part of domain controller so I'm just going to type the IP address of our ESXi 1.12 Port number 43, it's a for uh, SSH, provide the username and password, so username is root and password that you, you used while installation of ESXi, right? Click next and make a communication between each other. Yes, this is another page, you need to type the name of your vCenter server, so we have already created a record with name of VCSA. So I'm going to use the same name in case of our vCenter server management. It's a basically for management panel. You need to provide the password detail. Okay, wait. So I'm going to use both same password for both means for 
management and for our vCenter inventory console. This password can help you to troubleshoot and monitor the vCenter server manager. And next, you need to provide another password and username. Those username and password can help you to access the inventory panel of vCenter server. So it's try to validate and this is really important panel where we can find the uh, capacity of our vCenter server like the tiny, small, medium, large, x large. It's already mentioned about the prerequisite 2 core of CPU, 12 gig of minimum RAM up to 579 gig of hard drive. Uh, so we will use the thin provision so uh, it's enough to use the 200 gig of space. The vCenter server will support up to 10 ESXi up to 100 virtual machines, right? Another small 100 uh, host means ESXi and up to 1000 virtual machine you can create. 400 host you will be connect in medium and 4000 virtual machine you can add in your uh, medium environment. Large 1000, 10,000, X large 2035 virtual machine you can control if you are establish your vCenter server by choosing the option of uh, X large. Click next and here you, you are able to find one hard drive that you connected with your ESXi 199 point something gig of space which is uh, available 190. 8 point something GB of free space. So what you need to do, it's not enough, but if you proceed with enable thin disk, so definitely you are able to install it. I'm just going to uh, show you, if you are not check mark it, it cannot uh, give you option to proceed for next step because you don't have a enough space, right? Insufficient space, the requirement is 579, so it's really difficult to uh, use uh, approximately 570 gig of space in normal environment like in your own setup. So that's why you must need to check mark it thin provision, click next. Now it automatically accepts the space that you provided. VM network, IPv4, static IP address and FQDN is a, uh, basically uh, you can say that uh, uh, optional, but I'm just going to use vcsa.vm.local. So FQDN, you know that uh, provide the VCSA means computer name included with domain controller name. About the IP address, so we decided we need to provide 192.168.225. This is the IP address for our vCenter server. About the subnet mask, so 255.255.255.0 because we are using IP, uh, IPv4 and class 3, right? Uh, class C, sorry. About the gateway, yes, I want to use the internet access, so you must need to provide the gateway. So my ISP provided 1.1 .1 as a gateway, so I'm just going to use the same. One important part, DNS server. So you need to verify the IP address of your DNS. So DNS IP address, I need to check and verify the DNS IP address. This is our domain controller. Open CMD, IP config all. And my DNS IP address is 1.16. So you should be used the same IP address as a DNS. 1.16, port number 80 and port number 443. Clear? So it uh, you need to provide both uh, IP address like as a preferred DNS and alternate DNS. So alternate DNS 8.8.8 .8 because we don't have alternate DNS. So we should use the Google address 8.8.8. .8 .8. Clear? I hope you all of you understand about this step. Next. Uh, you just need to take the screenshot of this particular configuration because this configuration can help you in case of troubleshooting. So this is the first stage setting. You need to click finish and now it will take up to uh, as per the configuration of your desktop that you, you that you are using for the vCenter server installation. It's depend upon uh, the configuration. Maybe it will take up to 20 to 25 minutes, right? So guys, I'm just going to pause the video. Once our first stage is completed, we will uh, show you the another step. It's really simple to install vCenter server uh, on our ESXi host. So let's wait guys. I'm just going to uh, pause the video and wait for the 100%. Clear? Now, after 25 minutes, uh, stage one is completed. So now we need to proceed for stage two. We just need to click on continue and follow the step.
Okay, this is another step that you need to follow to install vCenter Server Appliance. And now, one stage is completed. What we need to do? We need to provide the configuration for stage two. We just need to click next. You need to provide the server configuration, SSO, and the chat configuration, which is related to the security and ready to complete. So what you need to do, this is the vCenter server configuration panel where we find two different options, time synchronization mode and SSH, uh, SSH uh, access, SSH access you know very well about with the help of this particular option, you can access your vCenter server with the help of putty terminal. So yes, I want to activate it. You must need to enable it that uh, you can access your yes, uh, vCenter server with the help of uh, putty terminal. And we have a two different op options, synchronize with ESXi host or you can synchronize the timing with NTP servers. So in your environment, if you establish a uh, NTP server, so you can proceed with second option, otherwise you can proceed with uh, ESXi host. Just need to click next. And in second part, in next step, we need to provide the information related to the SSO single sign on, si sign in on that can help you to access your vCenter server from uh, web browsers. So what you need to do, just need to use the same name, vSphere.local. I'm just going to use the same name for the login. So administrator at the date vSphere.local, which is a, a username that you can use to access the console or inventory of vCenter server, right? And this is really important. This is another password that you need to configure. And this password can help you to access the console access the inventory, not a management portal. So once our ESXi, once our vCenter server ready to use, I'll give you the complete details related to the difference between uh, console of inventory and console of vCenter server manager. So I'm, I'm going to give you the complete detail, but now we need to install the vCenter first. So I'm using both password, same password for both settings. So just need to need, click next. Okay, next again, no need to do anything, ready to complete. Now it will take again eight to 10 minute time. Click finish and okay. It will take uh, 10 more minutes. So once our vCenter server is ready to use, I'll show you how you can access. Fine, so let's wait. I'm just going to pause the video. Finally guys, our vCenter server is ready to use. We successfully install our vCenter server. Now I'm going to define, we have a two different way to access our vCenter server. One, with the help of, uh, although we are using the same step to access both uh, 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 panel basically, console. One console can help you to manage the HA, DRS and all. I'm talking about the inventory. And another panel related to the vCenter server is considered as a server manager widget that can help you to uh, check the status or check the health of your vCenter server. So you can access with the help of uh, this particular name or you can also access your vCenter server by using the uh, private IP address that you configured. So I'm just going to open a browser, means any browser you can open, like I'm going to open Google Chrome. And as we know that the vCenter server IP address is 192, right? .168.1.225. Make a colon. If you want to access the vCenter server uh, manager wizard, you just need to type colon and 5480. This is the uh, number that you need to use uh, you are unable to access why we why we are unable to access it let me check uh, if we are able to access the console yeah we are able to access it 225 and click here it will be redirect you on page of inventory and if you are unable to access this wizard, you need to configure one more setting in your host file. You know that about the host file. So we need to uh, type the details of our vCenter server name and IP address. So wait, we I think it's working. We are able to access the vCenter server panel inventory wizard. Oh, it's not reachable. It means that you need to configure the host file, right? So host file, you just need to open my computer, means this PC, go to the C drive. Under the C drive, we have a Windows, I think, yes, Windows. And uh, we need to select system 32. Under the system 32, you need to find drivers, right? And driver, under driver, yeah. Oh, okay. Under driver, you need to open ETC folder. 
and open with notepad right so what you need to do you just need to make a few changes like i have already configured so i'm just going to change the ip address because currently we are using 225 right and you also need to configure the uh, host file for 192.168.1.225 colon 5480 that can help you to access the server manager widget it's a vcenter server manager widget okay so i'm just going to type it vcsa.vm.local 192.168.1.225 this is the ip address of vcenter server you just need to save it fine so we successfully save it and open uh, try to open it again 225 okay click advance again VCSA unsafe, no problem. This is the login panel where we can find the uh, service related to the vCenter inventory. Username should be a vSphere.local administrator at the vSphere.local and password that you used while installation and login. It will be redirect you on the page of uh, inventory so now this is the inventory panel where we can configure our where we can add the uh, esxi host configure a ha drs clone template each and every option you can perform on this particular panel we have a data center we are able to find template and vms right and we are able to find uh, data storage and network required so this is all about the vcenter server installation so I haven't skipped any step. You know that about Teach Me Cloud can provide you 100% live practical based video series. So I hope you will be you, you will be able to install your own vCenter server with the help of this particular video. So that's it, guys, for today. And please do subscribe Teach Me Cloud because Teach Me Cloud can give you 100% live practical based video series on different different technology. Thank you, guys. Take care and bye bye.